Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Cheers. You must have clicked on this video thinking, well this is going to be interesting. And you're right, it certainly is. So what am I exactly talking about? Well, you've heard me speak on my channel. If you've been here for a little bit, if you're new, hi, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me today. But I speak about ingredients in skincare and in our cosmetics. And there's a lot of them that don't belong there. Are most of them going to harm us and kill us? Probably not, unless there's some type of listeria thing going around. Do you know what I'm saying? But the sneaky little ingredients that makeup companies put in cosmetics and in skincare are there and they're not that great for your skin and they will age you and they will do harmful things to your skin and you should just kind of avoid them and I do my best to do so on a daily basis. So the one ingredient that we are going to talk about today is denatured alcohol. Now by the way, I do have some notes because I've done extensive research over time. I have a lot of it up here, but I'm not perfect and I want to have my notes available for accuracy. So if I do look down occasionally, that is the reason why I want I did put my talking up points down. So the reason I'm holding this glass and in this glass is a really good glass of Moscato by the way. And let me just have some. I love a good glass of Moscato. The reason I'm drinking alcohol is because this alcohol is an ethyl alcohol or ethanol. We can drink it. A lot of us enjoy it. We don't know what it's doing to our insides. Of course, we do know what it's doing to our liver, but that's a whole other story. That alcohol is essentially, now this bottle is gross because it's well used and well loved. My dad and I use it in the shop all the time for me to do a lot of things with it. This disgusting old can is what's called denatured alcohol. Now what is denatured alcohol you might say? Let's back it up a little bit. I'll give you a little backstory. Originally a long time ago people used ethyl alcohol not to be confused with methyl alcohol or methanol which is wood grain alcohol. Wood derived. So people used to use regular alcohol to do their cleaning and degreasing and as a solvent and as all other things. But the problem was that drinking alcohol is taxed much higher than non-drinking alcohol. So what somebody brilliant did was they came up with denaturing agents or bittering agents that you can't drink that they added to the ethyl alcohol to make it said denatured alcohol. What's so wrong with that? Well, absolutely nothing as far as that backstory is concerned. So what did I mention? I mentioned that denatured alcohol, which is basically the same as drinking alcohol, with just some nasty stuff added to it. See, you don't drink it because you wouldn't want to drink it. Anything can denature it. The stuff that's in here, obviously you cannot drink. Not only would it taste bad, but it's harmful to you. The denaturing that cosmetic companies add to ethyl alcohol is not the same thing. You can add anything to alcohol so that you don't drink it so that it has become denatured, but it's still alcohol. Now, would you wash your face with this? A good bottle of Moscato? Wouldn't want to waste it on that. Would you use it as a toner? Would you... What happens when you wash your hands in isopropyl alcohol? You get dry, you can get irritated, and all of those other things. And I do have a little demonstration tool here. Here's some gaskets, metal brass gaskets. I just finished changing uh, faucets, both my kitchen and my bathroom. And these are the old ones, and I said, wow, you know what? This is perfect. These are disgusting and rusty and filthy. They'll be perfect tools for me today. We're going to demonstrate what denatured alcohol would do to this because I use it for this all the time. You might be saying, well, they can't possibly put stuff that's going to take rust and gunk off of metal and brass in your cosmetics, can they? Uh, yeah, they can, and yeah, they do. So now that we know what essentially denatured alcohol is, let's talk about the different names that it could have. You will say, see, denatured alcohol, 
alcohol denade, SD alcohol. In there can it be included, of course I said they will just list ethanol, benzyl alcohol, isopropyl, and they will include occasionally methyl or methanol alcohols. These are all the bad alcohols. Now, there are good alcohols, and I'm going to get to those in, in, in a minute, but what does this alcohol do to our skin? And then we're going to discuss why they do it. First of all, if you constantly washed your hands with this, now I do use this to get off, um, if I have something sticky or greasy from doing something around the house, I will use this to get it off because it is a solvent and it will take anything sticky, like when you get like um, this sap, this takes sap off your hands beautifully, or tar and things like that. Think about it, it takes tar off your hands. Just remember that. So what is it and what does it do? It's a solvent, it's a degreaser, and what it does. If you washed your hands every day with isopropyl alcohol or the denatured alcohol, what would happen to your hands? They would become dry, flaky, aged, wrinkled, yucky hands. Remember that I mentioned that it's a degreaser and a solvent. The reason that companies are putting it in makeup products, now remember they're obviously not putting lethal ingredients to de make it denatured into the skincare. They're putting less toxic ingredients, but they're still having, the alcohol is still having the same effect on your skin. Constant use of the alcohol will break down collagen, it breaks down the ability of the cells to rejuvenate. It dehydrates your skin. So if you're oily and you're using products with the alcohol in it to get rid of the oil, your skin is becoming dehydrated and now it's breaking down the cells. So your skin is going to produce more and more sebum or oil to try to counteract the effects of the drying of the alcohol. Why are they putting it in there? Well, it's a viscosity decreasing agent. What means is that it's going to give creams an easier slip on your skin. It is going to make products dry down quicker so that they adhere to your skin and last longer. So it's evaporating on your skin, which means moisture being sucked out of your skin. It can also be used sometimes as a preservative. Now, if that alcohol, now there are other preservatives, but if it is down low in the ingredients where all of the preservatives are listed, it's not that big of a deal because I know why it's there and the reason that it was put in there. But when it is high up, the reason they're doing it is because they want the product to last. They want the product to apply smoothly. They don't want it to be too thick. And I can understand why these companies are doing it, but what I don't understand is why there are other companies who have found ways to make products work without the use of it. But it takes more time, effort, and probably money to do so. Now the funny thing is, is that you can also use this for fuel. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, something I want to add into maybe a burner lamp do I really want to be putting that on my skin? And again, if you're using it one time or one bottle of ingredient, is it going to cause irreversible damage to your skin that you can't get back? No, of course not. But the daily use of these products will break down that collagen, will dry out your skin, will cause more wrinkles, will cause more cell damage that cannot be undone if you are constantly doing it. So here on one hand, you're using good for you products, your vitamin C's, your vitamin A's, your BHA's, your AHA's, and then you are counteracting it with this alcohol. And when the alcohol is up front and all of the oils and the fruit acids and everything else and the jojoba esters are all beneath it, what's the most active ingredient? Remember, ingredients are listed in the order of their concentration and except when you get down to the preservatives, anything underneath that is usually less than 1% of an effective ingredient. So if you see the good for you ingredients, like a company can say, we have vitamin C in our product, but the vitamin C is below the preservatives and the denatured alcohol is a second ingredient, your vitamin C is rendered essentially useless. 
So now that we've talked about what it is and why they put it in the skincare, but again, I just disagree because there's too many other things and too many other companies like BioElements, like Biosense, that use other preservatives and other things to make their products effective and work. And it's especially, by the way, as I put this on my just a regular paper towel, it's especially bad in foundations. We put foundation on our skin every day. Yes, it'll dry down. Yes, it'll be matte. But think about what it's doing to your skin. Here we have a lovely, rusted, disgusting, actually, piece. And I'm going to do this right on camera for you. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't require rubbing, but look at the clean spot. Look at the shiny brass that's revealed underneath all of that gunk, and look what is on my paper towel. And I have to tell you already, my hands feel like crud. There's that shiny piece of metal revealed under that layer of disgusting crud. Let's try this one. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait to, to get this off of my hands. Well, y'all, just look at that. Shiny bright metal, disgusting crud on here, and voila. So now that I feel terrible, and now that you know, if it is doing that, if it can clean that off of this, what is it doing to your skin? Food for thought. Food for thought. Now let's get into other alcohols that now every time you see an alcohol, you may freak out and go, oh my goodness, I can't use it. Not true. I'm going to, to let you know the good alcohols, the fatty alcohols that are actually beneficial and should be in our skincare. Now what do fatty alcohols do? Well, they are slip agents. They attract moisture to your skin. They are... They slow down the water loss that can happen to dehydrate your skin. They're good for you. You may see things like behenol, uh, caprylic, cetyrol. The one you will see the most often is acetyl alcohol also, which are all beneficial. Steril alcohol and isosteric alcohol. And I said if you see those, especially right up top along with glycerin and any of the other active ingredients that you want, those are not ones to be afraid of. Those are the alcohols that you want in your skincare. What you don't want is this, and this was perfect to show, and some of this, by the way, because this is an old bottle, the reason that it looks like this is because, you know, when you're using it, it drips down and, and look how it breaks down the metal and everything else. Like, yeah, we don't want this on our skin. We don't want them in our products. And it is my mission, and I'm going to bring that mission to you, to find the products that don't contain these, that do work, and that are good for you. And I have found a couple. I have shared those with you. That's my mission, and that's what I plan to do. I hope you found this video somewhat entertaining, uh, but also somewhat informational as well. So I hope I gave you a good enough breakdown of what these things are, why they put them in there, and why they don't belong there. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment down below, and I will answer everything that I can to the best of my ability. Where did I get this knowledge from? Am I a chemist? No, I'm not. But I do read chemical journals, uh, I do have a lot of chemistry teachers on hand at school, by the way. I read medical journals and not just Googling it on the internet. I get my information from valid sources that have nothing to gain or lose from publishing the information. And it all is all public information. If you search properly, you will find out the same information that I do. And be wary of people who say, if you s click onto a skincare company, who's trying to sell you something, they may tell you, it's not that bad for you. Of course, because their products have it in it. And they may list the reasons what it does and it's harmful and things like that. And EWG even lists it, it lists it as a skin irritant, which it absolutely is. For those of us with sensitive skin, 
and a rosacea or any type of allergic reactions that you have to products, this stuff will irritate your skin and you will notice lots of reactions to it. So skincare companies that say, it's okay, it's not going to kill you. No, of course it's not, but it is going to do harm to your skin. So that is all my ranting. Again, if you have questions, please let me know. I hope you guys have an amazing day, an amazing week, whatever part of the world you are in and on and around. And I'll see you very next time with hopefully a more lighthearted video. Much love, my friends. Bye.